Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to The Hangar. Sorry I haven't posted in a little while. Got a very special project. So, just jump right into it. What this is, is basically, if you know, you know. Um, it's quite possibly the one of the ultimate universal metalworking tools. They don't make them anymore. It's called a Polmax machine. And, with the thing with the Polmax machine is it's uh, sort of a universal machine. It's just a reciprocating, kind of like power hammer style, but not a full power hammer. There's a bunch of little things you have to kind of pay attention for. It was designed as a shearing and forming machine. So you can get a number of different dies for it and they all kind of seed into these different chucks and they're all based off of um, sort of like square stock material. So this is like 19 mil square stock, but it's obviously hardened because the company I bought this off of is um, was only used for shearing material. So that's all they have it set up for. So you can do metal shaping with it. You can shrink with it. You can form with it. You can dome, you can nibble, you can slit, you can uh, punch. Um, you can shear. This machine this is actually capable of shearing um, 3 16 mild steel, which is incredible. So it was built in like, I believe the 60s or the 70s. The, like I said, the company doesn't make this model anymore. If you trace the history back far enough, you can figure out that they still do kind of make more of a modern one. But this old stuff just lasts way longer. So this model is called... Um, a P5-2 and it's one of their more common models I believe is on their lighter duty of things. I know they make some pretty heavy duty stuff but a while ago I, uh, I took a metal shape, a shaping course. I think it was like nine years ago or something like that. I went to uh, Faye Butler's and did his uh, metal shaping seminar and when we were there he had two of these machines. They were bigger models. I think they were the P21s and uh, just fell in love with them. So kept my eye open, looking on Kijiji and everything like that, and then just typed in Polmax one day and this thing popped up. Now, I paid 1500 Canadian for it. And when I saw that price, I didn't even argue, I didn't do anything because the prices of these things have shot up so much that I just felt lucky to be able to find one and then B to get that for 1500. Mind you, that's also Canadian dollars too. So yeah, go ahead and think about that one for a while. Now. The fact that it didn't come with any dies, I don't care if it worked or not. Basically, the frame and the gears are what's uh, all that's important to me. This old junky three-phase motor, all this setup, all this shit's coming off. And then, <clears throat> while I was searching for a new motor, guy out at the airport has this setup. This is a single-phase motor, as uh, it will go forward and reverse. And the shaft size is basically the same. So I picked that up for free. Grabbed a, I grabbed a VFD off of Amazon for like a hundred bucks. If it works, it works. If not, if not, uh, move on from there. But basically, that's, it's time to start tearing this thing down. Uh, checking, making sure everything's good on the inside. I'm gonna pull this, uh, this top plate off. Check the gears inside. But the most important thing is, with very little ease, you know, one finger, I can, let's see if you can see that kind of move. It actually rotates. I'm not getting any interference. I'm not getting any grinding, any noises. Everything tracks super smooth. So this should be, knock on wood, be a pretty simple uh, revive and run on this old piece of equipment. I'll have to get some oil for it and everything like that. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. All right, so got all the uh, garbage electrical off. I'm sure somebody over and watching the video will be like, why'd you take all that three-phase shit off just to put on single-phase? I found a motor for free and a VFD drive was 100 bucks or something like that. Went with that route. So used a universal Allen key and a flathead screwdriver. Got all this garbage off. So now I'm gonna open up the top, have a look inside and pull the motor off and uh, start measuring it up to put that one on. All right, so with the top opened up here, you can kind of see how it's working. Had a look to see if there was like 
kind of any corrosion popping in there. There's a little bit of pitting, but nothing too bad. It doesn't look like any seals or anything are wore out. So if I start spinning the motor, you can see that there's like, kind of like a crankshaft turns a, well, like a connecting rod. And then you can just see which rotates this up and down. But we also have this lever here. And this lever controls the stroke. So that's on the biggest length of stroke that we have. And then up top, sorry about the light. Up top here, you can just see as I switch the stroke, you can actually watch. It's like an eccentric, uh, eccentric shaft that just moves around. And that controls the overall stroke of uh, the machine. So nothing looks that bad in there that I have to uh, be of concern. The reason why I really wanted to open it up is, well, I bought this thing like darn near 10 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> the reason I wanted to open it up is I bought this thing like 10 years ago and uh, I put it at a buddy of mine's house and it literally sat in, outside in a pole barn for like 10 years exposed to the elements. And we get some uh, pretty harsh winters up in Northern Canada. So I just wanted to double check everything, make sure it's all good to go. And just got to finish pulling this heavy ass motor off. Hopefully I don't drop it on my toes. And uh, so one thing I like to do is kind of get like get underneath my arm to support everything. And I can wiggle shit out. Cause now I'm just trying to find a balance point. Get this last bolt out. There we go. Off of the flexible coupling. And rip my shirt. Woo! Alright, oh, a bunch of crowd in there. Not bad though. Yep, I will. Whoa, Dad. Hey, Dad. There you are, Dad. Dad! Hey, Dad! Well, man, sounds. Let's put these guys back in. This is kind of neat, never seen this before. These are just sort of, uh, it's kind of like a bolt. It's threaded for a different, uh, different bolt in it. And uh, it's actually pretty awesome. So I'm able to completely level a motor to what I need the shaft to, and then jam nut it all down, and then it wouldn't be going anywhere. So kind of like built in uh, level plates. I'm gonna remember that. Because this would be easy to build and a super easy way of actually leveling electric motors. And uh, if you're uh, not into that kind of stuff, you really want your motors level and your shaft nice and parallel. And uh, ways of measuring it with uh, my uh, dial indicators and, and everything like that and lasers, there's, uh, there's a reason why mill rates are so precise with it. It's uh, because everything starts at the motor. This is up, that's out, and then vibration causes everything else to weaken up after time. So these things are, these are cool. I like that. So that's all done. This uh, little flexible coupling still looks half decent. Real quick, here, you can see how this moves. So I'll be able to bring this out and then this I can level to each one and make sure the motor is exactly where where you need to be. All right, so got an update. Basically, talked with my buddy who's actually an electrician and wired this basically every way I possibly could uh, with the capacitors and everything like that. And um, it's not working. So I hooked up the VFD to this old motor because I did find that it is actually a dual voltage 220. But I hooked it up and at least the VFD works, but the motor won't turn. So I think the motor's effed on that. So I think I'm sitting here with uh, two dead motors. Son of a bitch. So I'm going to pump the brakes on this. Pump the brakes. Go probably buy a new motor from Princess Auto and then I'll make that work. So uh, when you see me next, hopefully I'll have a new motor. So it's a couple days later. This motor's messed up. 
This motor's messed up. And to Canadian Air Princess Auto. And they had three horsepower motors on sale for the price of a two horsepower motor. Wired it up to my little uh, VFD. Hit run. She's working. Heat it up. Stop her. Except I can't turn it up too high. Starts vibrating like crazy. It's not bolted or anything. And uh, then it just trips itself out. But really happy with that. I actually got it working. Gonna unplug this right now. And you have to be careful. Still flashing lights. That means there's still power coming to there. Ask me how I know. Well, let it run for a second. Capacitors die out and it dies. So I'm gonna call her here for today. I'm gonna to come back. Okay, man, it's been a minute since I've been back out of the hangar ready to work uh, on the Polmax. Um, I think it was actually close to two months ago. So to catch you up, me and my wife, um, we had our house for sale. We sold our house, bought a new house, moved to said house, um, kids, school, um, a trip, um, just so many things have piled up that got in the way of me being out here to work on this. Um, in that time, my neighbor built a nice sleeve adapter with a tapered uh, key so I could get this junker motor. Uh, when I say junker motor, it's brand new, but it's from Princess Auto, three horsepower. I already tested the motor with this uh, little VFD inverter so I can control the RPM with it because I don't want to over rev this uh, equipment. I, uh, so now all I have to do is get this motor to mount up to here, get my center line of my shaft from the ground to match the center line of the drive up here and uh, I'll be good to go. So let's get this motor measured out on this uh, Bullmax machine. So you can't quite see, but there's a little dimple there that you can see in the lake. So that's the center of your shaft, because that's where uh, the centering uh, centering chuck held it on the lathe. So that's where you measure to. So I got about 5 and 11 sixteenths. That's to the center line of my shaft. Now I have these rods here, these bolts that are going in. This one would mount the motor to build the motor bracket. So I have one and an eighth, and that's about as far out as I want to go. So I have to take that into account. All the way down to about, uh, that's about nine sixteenths of an inch there. So I'm going to write these measurements down, get the center line of that motor. All right, so I got the motor pulled off. Luckily, whoever welded this did not do a very good job. So it's going to be really easy to cut this shit apart. Uh, I need about 16 inches and then cut it about an inch and a half here. This one's already kind of cut it an inch and a half. Plug some new holes in it and then uh, then I'll extend it out so I can mount uh, my little VFD there. I'll get cut right now.
right, so now I need to figure out hole centers. So I already measured this one out. That's about seven and an eighth. And I measured this out, and that hole center is about uh, seven and three quarters. So now I need to figure out the relation of where center line is, so I know where to place the angles. An easy way to do that is a laser. Set up a laser, fold the beam down. There we go. So now for my center of my hole, it should be about four inches. Three and 15 sixteenths, four inches. Um, motor has nice slotted holes on it. So I do get a lot of back and forth, but the uh, more accurate you are and the closer you are, the less you have to adjust it and uh, the more room you have for adjustment. So I'm gonna uh, mark some stuff out, bring you guys back in a minute. Podge of clamps and some scrap angle. Lasers lined up. Got a mark on my bracket. Grab a marker. Two lines. Now I have center line height wise of my shaft. Get that all bolted up and we'll get going on it. All right, so put the flexible coupling in, put the other end of this uh, connector on, transfer my mark from the back there to here, put the motor bracket on, transfer the line there, measured that out, that was an inch and a half. Figured out where this needs to go, put a mark down there, Basically measured everything out, so now I know where the collar and everything needs to go. I have uh, my sleeve marked somewhere. I'll probably have to put it back together. Find my mark, cut it down, get it all together, put some marks here so I know where everything goes, how far back. Uh, cut and weld some studs on, and then be good to go. So I'm gonna get a bunch of stuff done. I'll bring you back in a few minutes. Drill out the holes for the studs, and then I'll uh, weld it all up.
Okay, well, motor drops down, distances still look good. Now I just need to get a uh, plate for my uh, inverter that I'm going to be running so I can use a speed controller on this. And then uh, I'll get that measured up, cut that out on that plate, get it tacked down, weld it out, and then uh, get it mounted. Couplers all bolted up, are all on there at the sleeve. So, now I just need to make sure my center line goes through. I have adjustment up and down. I'm really close here, so I can bring the, the coupler out and get it nice and tight there. But you can see, it's just a little bit of an uneven gap here. But I have room to bring the whole motor up. And then I need the other center line going right down to match up. And I get that adjustment with these. And then there's also your back. So you can adjust all of these bolts separate. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to fiddle with that for a little while and uh, bring you back in a, in a little while. All right, so yet again, a couple days later, finally back out the hangar to finish wiring this up and seeing if this thing will run. So I spent a lot of time shimming, rotating, pulling, pushing, getting this all lined up as true as I can without uh, either a laser or dial indicators. Got my inverter wired in so I can control the speed a little better. 
I got some oil in. It's actually old airplane oil. My airplane runs uh, 20W50. And some of the information I collected from guys who run these machines all the time, they say, yeah, just run 2050. And luckily, I had some uh, old stuff lying around. Now these uh, machines are kind of self-changing oil because they leak all over the place after time. So not too worried about it. Let's see, plugged it in, down as low as it goes. Let's see if the orientation is right. And moment of truth. Okay, got power to, uh, power to the inverter. Bring the RPMs up a little bit. Not motor. Oh. <clears throat> well, it runs. It doesn't run perfect, but I'm still just really excited. Um, I'll take it apart. I'll take apart the whole the whole front and everything like that because I plan on cleaning it up and find out if what's loose and everything like that because there shouldn't be that much vibration in it. Uh, I don't think anything's bent or out of whack now that this has been running. I'll double check my uh, double check the motor run out and everything like that to make sure it's going well and uh, but yeah this is this has been about 10 years of having this machine, keeping it in storage, transporting it around, finally getting it to a shop where I, I have the room, I have the room to work with it and work on it. I'm just so, so excited that I have it. There's power to it. It works. Now I can troubleshoot from here on out. So anyways, if you want to see more on this video, make sure you hit subscribe. And uh, yeah, remember if work was fun, everyone would have a job.